and we just evolved and we just appeared no okay even if they are not believers he can take a situation and a people that you would think no and speak to you and teach and minister to you that's that's the thing that's the thing and those are the best lessons even though they're painful they're the best lessons that's when you're gonna learn you're gonna learn <laughs> like it or not okay that something is happening and that's the lesson you need to learn okay especially if you've been warned <laughs> and um, you've had plenty of time to turn away from something and you won't that's what a loving father does that's what a loving parent does okay a loving parent doesn't stand there and let you just <laughs> they they raise you they raise you they teach you they guide you that means the person loves you okay someone that doesn't love you doesn't care they don't care what happens to you. they're not gonna say anything to you okay they're just gonna let it happen oh well it's not me okay this is tempered in love so she accepted and applied the wise advice about how to work safely and in good company but most importantly she never lost sight of where her true refuge lie okay even if that was not how she started out okay she believed in another um, another belief system with multiple gods and goddesses who sacrifice children among other things but she realized and she saw what Jehovah God stood for and that when it really came down to it he okay Jehovah God he had her he had her he had her back he was protective he's a protective father so this is another a lesson that even if you feel like you've moved so far away from good and you're involved in certain things and there's certain things that just got a grip on you Jehovah God is still there he wants you to come to him he doesn't want people to stay enslaved because that's what it is it's enslavement to the adversary and to the to the different things that he tempts us with and and pulls us in some of it's subtle some is very overt he wants you to come to him he does not want you to be when it comes down to the showdown of showdowns that we talked about because we're in the last days we really are people have been saying that for a while okay um, I think of Adele Gibbons uh, Queens of Comedy and she talked about her grandmother saying that um, a joke that she'd said on there if you're familiar with that um, that that's all that our grandmother talked about and it was the truth but the thing is is that we're even closer now to the last days than what she was referring to so he wants you to be able to partake of what he your spiritual legacy that we've talked about okay which is to live um, in peace to live in a paradise and any and every other thing that he has in store because he wants what's good for you okay this is what you were meant to be you always were meant to be you were not meant to be enslaved and to be going through the things that we're going to through because he's a loving parent he's the creator why would he want that for something that he himself created even though the adversary will try to convince you that's what it is you can turn around you can turn this situation around so if we show loyal love as Ruth did okay and follow her example in humility being industrious okay um, and show appreciation okay we will find that our faith too will become a sterling example for others so how though did Jehovah provide for Ruth and Naomi how did he do this so this is another question to think about as you listen to the second segment um, and I would invite you to also um, uh, follow with your Bible or um, find the um, biblical account on your device and follow along as we look through in this next segment uh, following segment 
of uh, the book of Ruth, uh, chapter 1 through 4. So I want you guys to think about that question, and I'm going to close with that. How, though, did Jehovah provide for Ruth and Naomi? For this episode of Loyal Love, the story of Naomi and Ruth, we're going to uh, listen to uh, Bible Gateway, and um, we're going to listen to uh, the Bible book of Ruth from chapter 1 through chapter 4. If you'd like to follow along with your Bible, go grab your Bible, and let us learn more about these two women and um the encounters that they had and the lessons that can be learned from them. The Book of Ruth, Chapter 1 In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about ten years, both Malon and Kilion also died, and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept aloud, and said to her, We will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons? Who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord's hand has turned against me. At this they wept aloud again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women exclaimed, Can this be Naomi? Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. Ruth 2 Now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side, a man of standing from the clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find favor. Naomi said to her, Go ahead, my daughter. So she went out and entered a field, 
and began to gleam behind the harp.